Hey, well, welcome back. It's been a, <clears throat> a while. In fact, I would say maybe two months since I uh, did my first couple of episodes uh, doing the streaming here. Uh, and my project here is basically to uh, do chat GPT for solo role-playing game stuff. Sorry as I look over here. I'm just uh, testing out that the sound works, which I'm always paranoid about. Anyhow, now... I'll go over there and uh, let's turn that down. So, yeah, I've been playing solo role playing. I've been doing solo role playing with ChatGPT for a while. Actually, since August of 2023, on and off. And I think in the past couple of months, I've really been doing it a lot more. I've kind of uh, figured out some things here and there. But what I want to develop is, a, a, I don't know, Turing test is too much of a word, but I want some tests that you can run with various uh, prompts that you might use and... Um, uh, the different LLMs, whatever, the models that you're using, specifically for playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And the whole idea is that, uh, you know, solo role-playing is fun on its own in a manual way. Uh, it's especially great if you use, like, you know, the Mythic Game Master engine. Uh, I haven't really used the uh, uh, Plot Unfolding Machine a lot, but it looks very promising. I like that. Um, but it's also nice to have the uh, kind of uh, surprise and variability and continual plot stuff that you could get with Chat uh, GPT or Gemini or Claude or Minstrel. I, I don't know all the ones. Uh, and I live in Amsterdam, so not all of them are actually available, nor the functionality, which is super annoying. But um, uh, yeah, it's actually, it can be really nice. Uh, not only for helping you think of your ideas and be creative, but for actually coming up with new stuff, uh, which, which can be surprising. But it needs a lot of guidance and work, and you've got to put up with uh, it forgetting things, the context window being small. Uh, so, you know, I'm always trying to figure it out. And um, professionally, professionally, like I'm really interested, you know, since uh, generative AI, I'm just going to say AI, is going to like take over the world and do all this magical stuff yet no one has really used it that much except for the past year or so, uh, especially in a business context. I think until you actually mess around with it and uh, experience it uh, firsthand on your own, like it's actually very hard to get a sense of uh, what it can do. Like you will dream up too much stuff. I made a little video about this the other day that if you're uh, trying to use AI or whatever, in a business context, the first thing you need to do is just experiment with it and try it. So anyways, here's what I'm going to do today. Uh, I, I came up with a, a new uh, prompt. Uh, you know, it's good to evolve prompts as you go. And, y you know, you got to be a little, not careful, but like mindful of prompts because, sorry, I can't see behind my camera here. Because uh, like, they, you know, I don't know, it's it's good to uh, modify them and look at them. And uh, there's actually been several prompts I found other people using recently, uh, which are great. I haven't put down where I got little bits and pieces from. So sorry about that. So first, I'm, I'll, I'll actually take this hopefully and edit it to a different format, kind of the reverse of what I'm about to say, uh, to uh, have it be not a live stream or whatever. Um, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go over the prompt that I have and kind of explain my thinking with it. And then uh, I'll just load it up into ChatGPT. And you see that I've also made a tiny adventure to test it with. This is kind of like I want to have a standard adventure that you go through that tests a few key things to get a sense of what it is. And I'm using I'm going to use one of the characters, Lola Janney, uh, from... Uh, how do you say it? Fandedevlin from... Uh, uh, I never know how to pronounce this, but you know, the lost minds of whatnot, uh, fan, fan, fandango, fan, fandalorian, fan, fantastic is how I think it's going to, uh, end up, uh, fan Devalin. here. I'm going to keep looking it up. This is a part I can, I can edit out Fandalin. Yes, that's right. Anyways, uh, I thought that would be another good thing is to use the same character, uh, a stock character, a pre-made one. Uh, and I don't have the human variant stuff put on just because, I don't know, it actually would be kind of fun. Those those feats are like one of the funner things uh, in D&D, in &D, at least for me. You know, just those little background. I actually played D&D &D way back in the early 90s uh, when I was in uh, junior high. 
a much younger person. And I played, of course, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition. And then it's only really uh, in less than the past year, but in, in the past year, past eight months, that I uh, started playing it again and when my kids wanted to and rediscovered this whole 5th Edition thing. So it's actually, you know, as a side commentary, it's actually great. I played D&D when there was no internet. I, I mean, you know, that people used. And now it's amazing. There's so much stuff. Uh, so, you know. I'll, I'll do the old guy thing. Uh, there's really not much to complain about except, you know, things here and there or whatever. Things are nice. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. There's always things to complain about. Good things and bad things. So how about we uh, jump right into it? You know, my lighting is bugging me out here. It's really, it looks like I've got a uh, kind of sunburn. Eh, that's a little better. I think I need some, some sort of underlight, uh, which maybe I'll get one day. So let me go over to uh, looking at the screen here. So this, yeah, here we go. So let's let's look through. Let me zoom in a lot. So I'm not going to do this here. Maybe I'll do a separate one. One one of the practices that I have is I actually make in Chat GPT. I make a GPT, uh, which is I don't really quite understand what a GPT does. I I think it is it. Uh, I think you call it a rag or whatever. Like it's very unclear uh, with this material that you give it. You can upload files to it if that actually does something useful. <laughs> it, it does something useful, but the degree to which it does it is I'm not really sure. And of course, like all internet companies, uh, documentation is is uh, both hard to find, hard to understand, and sometimes just doesn't exist in a useful way, but whatever. Usually what I do is I load things up uh, in a custom GPT like, uh, and use that. You know, as a side note, one of the things I've been experimenting with that, that I should do another video on is you can actually use GPTs and other GPTs, uh, kind of little mini AI things. So I've been thinking of making ones to have like lore, maybe rules checks, maybe a GPT per a character that you're playing so you can kind of look things up uh, with that character, maybe even per NPC. That actually uh, would be a little over the top, but might be cool. So this is the prompt that I've ended up with. Now, I am not an expert prompt writer, excuses, etc. But I'll go over kind of my my thinking here. So first, uh, you know, I've used some very basic markdown. I don't know if that matters, but I wanted to mark off sections. So here you can see I'm right away establishing what we're going to be doing. And I don't really know if it matters to say skilled and imaginative, but I'm doing it. Uh, and you want to specify, you know, what, which one you're playing. And I like to call it the chat DM. So I'll tell that. Uh, and this is something new that I wanted to try is like, uh, I wanted it to like, you know, you know, there's all sorts of things in D&D. &D and, and you can, you know, uh, t tell, tell me about this since I'm uh, relatively new to fifth edition, but you know, the effects of dim lighting and what is dim light and what's not dim light and when can you stealth around and all this sort of stuff that's up to DM discretion. So I wanted to uh, actually change this around and, and let's see. So let me actually fix this because I'll tell you where this came from. But allow for creative interpretation of ambiguous rules and situations. All right. So this is actually, I forgot to introduce this. This is a, I use Gemini Ultra Mode or Ultra Plus or Ultra whatever, Pro Plus Excalibur. Uh, I used Google's Gemini thing to rewrite an original prompt uh, that I wrote. Uh, let me, I'll bring that up. Uh, because I thought, why don't I complicate this and have two AIs working with each other? So you can see in my original prompt, uh, let me put it word or side by side here. Let me fix this. I recently set up a, uh, a new machine and of course OBS freaks out. So here you can kind of compare side by side. Let me, uh, well, whatever, I'll just leave it up. Who cares? Actually, let me fix this up for the recording that I want to do. Come over here. This is, you know, I used to have uh, three screens, and this is where three screens might actually be uh, 
quite useful. But let me do a little side to side, side by side thing here. And you can kind of, you know, I'm not going to go over this in detail, but you can get a sense. Basically, Gemini came in and shortened a lot of what I was doing. So you can see how I actually was listing rule books and telling it things to do, you know, and also it's an expert at uh, figuring out ambiguous rules because that comes up a lot. So I'm going to I'm going to scroll through the Gemini one, but you can see uh, I wrote all sorts of stuff in here uh, and I tried to sort of organize it. And, you know, this is built on many months of playing it and things I wanted to avoid and ways I wanted to do things. And I'm not really sure how long these things are supposed to be. Uh, it's very unclear, especially if you're cutting and pasting uh, into these things. You know, the Gemini context window is huge. Uh, so if you aren't relying on uploading files, which I can't do in Gemini, I think you can do it uh, in other regions. Uh, but uh, And then also the pasting in the Gemini isn't that great. It's very frustrating. Like everything you hear about uh, these chat things doing and then what they actually do. It's one of the first things you learn is like, there's a big difference between what people say they do and how, and if they act, not if they do it, but how well they do it or not. So there's the prompt that I have, but you can see what Jim and I did. Uh, and I added in these headers to it. So I did some, some editing. So first, uh, you know, here, uh, I guess it did add some of the stuff here, but the important thing here is I wanted to tell it, you have to be pretty explicit about like, don't just be a dungeon master, go read the books. Right. Like and here are examples of things to look at and like be inspired by those. Uh, you know, you got to pretend like you're dealing with a um, entry level student that when you tell them to go study something, they, uh, you know, just assume they don't know what that means. But you've got to be explicit. Like, so go look at these books or draw on stuff from these books. Uh, it didn't really talk about. Uh, oh, subreddits. That's fun. So it did change that because there's a lot of stuff in Redd uh, reddits. And then. I want it to be, you know, make sure that it's fun. So the old rule of cool. Now, this is something that as I play, you'll probably see you have to do a lot of uh, is that chat GPT and other ones, they really like to take control of the game. And this is one of the things where like when you're telling it to be a dungeon master, you can tell it doesn't fully know what that is because a human dungeon master would like never take control of the players and dictate what they're doing, you know unless something weird happened in the story. But it happens very quick, or relatively quickly, surprisingly quickly in the, the, the AI worlds where they just start narrating the story back and forth and saying what your characters do and taking actions for them. And you got to remind it often uh, not to do that. So we start off with that. And then you can see in my original version, uh, let's see, you know, you should prioritize an... Uh, uh, autonomy and i kind of repeat this over and over again right like uh throughout my stuff i don't think it really does that and so you know you're telling it you want player autonomy do for skills checks and there's this you'll see this kind of pattern over in the prompts here and i see it in other prompts as well where you have to tell it you've got to coach it in being creative and inter introducing conflict basically constantly telling it that like as uh, maybe jim and i wrote it out of it but that like uh, challenge and conflict and action. Those are things that are fun. And so do those things, right? Now, the next thing, and I'm not sure I like this rewrite here. Let's let's look at, you know, my over here, uh, my rewrite in comparison. But this is something you uh, also notice with, uh, with chat GPT. And uh, it depends. I, I haven't used Gemini enough um, to, to see if it does this. But like, it really doesn't want to like do the next action. Uh, it really wants to sort of just like set some tone. Uh, and maybe it's like, because I've overly coached it on this stuff. But, you know, one of the things you want a DM to do is to like move the plot along, to like make decisions and do stuff, take initiative. Um, and so, you know, this is something I've noticed out of this domain, too, is I, I have a theory that, like, it's really hard for these AI things to take initiative to figure out what to do next, uh, because, you know, they're just predicting what would follow from what you did. So they won't just sort of, like, invent something out of the blue, I, I guess, unless you prompted them, ironically. So uh, it really shortened this down. But you can see uh, that I had a, a longer version here uh, of it. You know, maybe I'll just use my longer version, but uh, and then I also want to establish, like, I like, you know, whenever you're 
talking with it, like telling it not to take player uh, um, player action. Uh, again, you know what? I'm going to use my prompt because this one is, is too small, and we'll see if it's a disaster. So instead of doing that, uh, I'm going to leave this up because it's kind of fun to see how it was shortened. But I like to use this style where you use uh, curly braces uh, to give it instructions. So I tell it about that. And then here's like the writing style uh, that I want it to use. And this is something that I saw from, I forget what her name was, but she had a video going over how she uses Obsidian. Uh, but you tell it you know, kind of the writing style you want. And I think this is like college level. Uh, or it also said Charles Dickens, which... Is that college level? I, I guess if you find it difficult to read boring stuff. Uh, whoa, hot take on Charles Dickens. Anyways, uh, you know, and then I tell it like, it's good to have a length. You can always make it longer and be detailed. Don't skip over things. That's another thing I, I found in her uh, her prompt. And this was, I think this works really well. This was in her prompt as well, is write like a real person. Uh, and then, you know, I tell it like some styles, some books, some references, things that I like. Uh, and then here is like where I get into like what not to do, right? This is the positive version is, uh, you know, high fantasy, it really goes too much. So you want to kind of avoid that. And then it's also good, you know, you don't want people, you know, you don't want your, uh, your hobgoblins to walk in and be like, how's it hanging, home slice? Uh, so you want to kind of shift the language. And this is one that uh, I struggle with a lot to, to get it to do is it'll probably do this while we're playing it is oftentimes when it tells you uh, the chat dm tells you stories back it has this ending paragraph that has all this foreboding stuff like they stand on the precipice of an epic quest unknown if they can help the villager locate their lost laundry what may happen and befall them in their glorious adventures as they set blah 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 and it's just like no one wants that right? So you want to tell them not to be campy and moody, all that kind of stuff. And uh, let's see if it, you know, here you can see Jim and I kind of uh, really just reduce that uh, totally. So then we'll come down here. Uh, and this is sort of like, this is another thing it likes to do that you got to tell it not to do is you'll see when I play this, I type something in and then it will summarize what I just typed in instead of just moving on to the next thing. So I've been trying to address that uh, with, with this prompt here. Uh, you know what? And let me actually go update. You can see the, the character I'm going to be playing there. I actually, if, if you want to look below, I, um, I made a blog entry where I uh, put the prompt that I'm using, so you can go look that up. And uh, I'll also put an embed for this video when, when I get around to it, uh, which will be thrilling for you. So, uh, you know, this kind of thing, I don't think works really well to give it like numerical stuff, like do something about 10% of the time. We'll see what happens. The problem is that if you tell it to put in random encounters, it does it way too frequently. So I think... Maybe I'll get around to this, but I think I just need like a simple script and it would say something like, you know, uh, between scenes, run this script. And if it tells you if there's a random encounter, run that encounter. That's something that like, you know, I have a principle in doing this that I don't want to do programming or really much beyond what I'm showing you here. But I'm thinking that maybe what I could do is if I ask it to program for me, I can just have it write little simple standalone scripts. For example, if you've used the mythical game master emulator, uh, you know, you can, um, it would have to hold state to do the fate checks, the state of, uh, you know, the, the chaos level in this, whatever, that could be fine. Uh, but there's meaning tables where it just gives you random words for you to interpret. You could have it write uh, some stuff for that. In fact, the guy who does the uh, plot unfolding machine, he's there's this, uh, I guess, text expander replacement called a Spenso, where it'll like auto complete stuff for you. And he's done a, a pretty nice set of tools, although it doesn't really work very well on my machine. It's super slow to respond, which, you know, whatever. I didn't compile it or whatever. I'm sure it's my fault uh, or, or that it could be fixed. But you could see how you could take a let's even simplify it more you could take a, like a d100 random encounter table uh in a spreadsheet in csv and just say write a python script that 10 percent of the time or whatever it'll return one of these uh and then uh, have it write out what the encounter is and then um 
you could have it call that and then you could give it a prompt to say like run this script between scenes and if you get an encounter back play it out uh, that would be a, a fun thing to do so here we go to more of the uh, a big block of like how I want it to play the characters which I think does it even have that here? Yeah, it's you can see it's really good job being concise. But what I want here is like, you know, I want it to not be such uh, simpleness, <laughs> if, if that's a word. Kind of like the uh, having a very, uh, you know, good and evil like way of looking at things. So I'm trying to prompt it to like have interesting, you know, more complex, sympathetic, whatever things. I mean, what you would expect in normal uh, contemporary TV, you know, like there's obviously evil people in your Games of Thrones and things like that, but they're also like interesting characters. They're not just one dimensional. Uh, and especially in D&D, I mean, there's there's a whole, there's a book or some essays about like philosophy in D&D, which is probably interesting, right? Because like, you know, if you look at the monsters in D&D, they have their own societies. And even if they're like chaotic evil, or especially if they're, uh, what is it, lawful evil, they almost have like their own code and their morals. And just because like a humanoid or like kind of a, you know, I don't even, I guess you call them humanoids, but the standard uh, races or heritages, as they say in uh, the, the, the tiny dungeon thing, uh, they have their own set of morals, but like so do orcs or hobgoblins or all these other things. And they think they're right. And being a moral, um, maybe devils are, smart enough to know that they're actually immoral or whatever. I, I don't know. So, but I think this is something that's fun to experiment with to see if, uh, how you can get it to make interesting NPCs. And then for adventures, like I'm not really giving it very much guidance on creating adventures. Uh, that's something I need to do in the future, but early on when I had it create adventures, they were awful. Uh, and not good. So I like to more use published adventures. Like one, the thing I've been doing recently is playing um, the Icewind Dale, the Frost Rhyme Maiden, or whatever. Uh, and and it's it's pretty good. It's uh, it's it actually the sandbox nature of it goes really well with uh, chat DM GM stuff and solo role playing. Um, but I'll get to this. I had it write a very simple adventure, and then uh, you know. Here's some examples of like what, you know, describing things. There's some randomness. We'll see how this works out, right? Like, again, I don't think introducing randomness works out so well. And then finally, this is, uh, this is a little too, I haven't edited this one well enough. But, you know, it's fun to ask it like what's happening and what rumors are. I need to perfect this a little bit more because uh, I just copied this from an old one and it references one of my campaign settings. Um, but it's actually pretty good at it. Like, like when you ask it to do, uh, rumors, we'll, we'll see. And then, uh, I won't be doing a GPT thing. Uh, but you know, you also tell it that you might be giving it stuff. So let me just copy out one part from, I actually made some changes here. Background knowledge. Uh huh. Yeah. Include relevant setting details. Local lore offer a mix of whimsical and foreboding events relayed through the unique voices. Yeah, let me put this in here. Let me fix this. Have an anything? When's a serious, common, or surreal event? This isn't. Uh huh. Do this five times. Always tell me which of these events. Uh huh. Meh, that's pretty fun. All right. We'll keep that. But where is the one that I tell it to be in the Forgotten Realms? This is another theory of mine that, you know, because it's, for better or worse, legal or whatever, uh, read all of the internet, it should know all about the Forgotten Realms, right? So all of that is published and, in theory, processed processed in its model. So instead of uh, introducing my own world, we'll have it rely on that and we'll see we'll see how it works. All right, so now let's get to some of that GPT action. Let me uh, load it up here. I suppose I might run out of uh, the quota or whatever you want to call it. Uh, do I have anything embarrassing in there? 
Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Good. I don't. So I'm going to put this over here and then we'll go back to uh, this view uh -huh. so that you can see me. Let me see again. How do I pop this out of here? Ah, well, whatever. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is, and we're, I'm not going to use the Gemini one. So what you want to be able to do is normally, normally, sometimes, like I said, I use a, uh, I make a, a uh, oh, you can see how to make a uh, simple margarita. It's actually a pretty good recipe. So I'm going to paste that prompt in. And we'll see what happens. Oh, I guess one of the things I failed to add here. Okay. This is pretty key is do not start playing until I say so. In the meantime, just acknowledge that you got this. So I'll put that in here. But you can see it starts to create a uh, an adventure, which I'm not even going to read. Okay, I'm kind of burning my prompts here, but you need to put that in the original prompt. Otherwise, you can see it'll start doing that. Uh, so let's just test out before we get to the adventure thing. Like, uh, let's see. Oh, I'll be playing uh, this character. Uh, it's a pre-made character from... Lost Minds of Fandadoolin. You know, I, let's see, there we go. So what I did here is I use uh, Beyond D&D. Uh, &D, and here, so here's this character. Now, the deal with this stuff, oh, it doesn't actually have all of my screen. Well, that's weird. Uh, is... You can't actually just get like a text version. I searched around for a standard uh, markdown format, which is surprisingly hard to find. Uh, so I started making my own, but man, there's a lot of stuff to copy, uh, especially when you come to all of this. So that would be a really nice thing to have is like to go from the PDF that you get uh, to just like plain text. I don't know, maybe if I use the other systems, uh, it would work. But boy, talk about lock-in when you use one of these D&D uh, &D systems, you know, and you buy all your stuff in it. Or I don't know, you pirate it from like whatever 5e tools is and all of that. I guess if you pirated it, you wouldn't be locked in because it's more portable. Anyways, uh, I got the PDF. Now, let me open the PDF, right? If you haven't seen the PDF that gets downloaded, it's fine. I could probably actually just copy this stuff, but whatever. Uh, I have sort of mixed success with having ChatGPT read it, but... We're gonna give it to it. Uh, um, I'm uploading it now. Read it closely and tell me what you think of the character. So let's do that. This is this is a fun thing you can do is uh, do this stuff. Now I should be giving it notes and curly braces, but I'm not. So we'll see. Really. When you upload something like this, what you want to do is, um, oh, see, you've got to quiz it and make sure that it actually, it actually knows what's there. So I think what we need to do, so these are form fillable. So I'm going to go in, I'm in preview here, and I wonder if, so if I export it, let me see if I export it as a PDF and... Can I flatten it? Isn't there a create PDF A? I don't know what any of this stuff does, but I don't want it to be editable. Uh, I know this is this is thrilling stuff. Oh, I remember how I do this. Uh, if you actually come in here, so it's it's doing that, I think, because you can go in and edit this stuff. I've forgotten that I do this. So if you go through and you print it, and you know on the Mac, you can just save a PDF. And what is her name? Uh, Lola. 
That's a nice name, Lola. So, but when you print it, it should flatten it all out. Boom. So, try it with this file. So now let's do this again. One day I should prepare some music. There we go. So see, okay, so I downloaded the uh, downloaded the character sheet here, which you know you can do over here and export PDF. But then very nicely, it's a sheet that you can edit so you can evolve it. Uh, but that means that it's hard for it to read it. So if you just, you need to, I'm gonna call it flattening it, but if you print it out, it flattens it all and it's not editable. So again, when you give it stuff and ask it to do things, you always wanna test its knowledge. You wanna make sure that it's actually working, which I've done here. Uh, and also it's nice that you can upload files here and there. So uh, as a first level fighter, uh-huh, yeah. This is actually kind of an interesting mix of characters there. Uh, you can tell she's she's not a uh, made for, for ranged attacks, got a nine dexterity. So really just someone who goes in with their giant axe and uh, does stuff. I was thinking if you were at a feat, I think maybe the, the charger feat or just probably the great weapon master is what you would add just to have like a huge damage you could add. So let's see. Now we have that. Okay, so let's look at the adventure that I had it made up, make up. So let me bring up my notes here. I need a better camera placement so that it's not always in the way, but whatever. So let me bring up my notes. And what you can see is, so these are just the notes that I had on this stuff. And I'll show you the uh, uh, adventure one. Sorry, I need to recalibrate my screen here just a moment something is wrong with it what it should be doing is transform what there's some way of telling it why will it not fill properly oh there we go oh yeah now you can actually see everything Sorry that it was maybe messed up before, but whatever. Okay. Oh, I see what was happening. Well, it wasn't so messed up, but now it's really not messed up. Okay. So here, these are kind of notes of what I was going to do. Uh, and so here's the, you know, basic... Uh, here's like the basic thing I wanted to do. So I gave it this idea of a basic adventure. And what I wanted to test out was uh, kind of role playing uh, and then kind of like skills checks and like doing something and then combat, right? It's some sort of three things. And then also, I guess implicit in that is sort of like what you do after an adventure. Like, man, if it, if it uh, let's see, if it awards... XP after the adventure. I don't think it'll do this at all, but that would be a kind of a full understanding of what it means to be a dungeon master, right? Uh, or does milestone advancement, whatever. But the dog, the dog is very excited. Hey, hey. Must be some goblins at the door. Hold on, let me try to mute this so I don't break your... I always wonder what dogs are up to. I, you know, it, it's so territorial. I guess humans argue a lot, but I don't know. Not been my experience. So uh, I think these are kind of things I'm... I don't really have the test in place, but so I wanted an adventure that like uh kind of test these things i don't know why it would take three rounds but you know one it's got an interesting description of the setting so basically the setting is the player goes to a, an inn they want to get some free stuff i don't know so they need to convince the the innkeeper to give them like free room and board or something may it'd be interesting to see if it draws on the uh 
does it draw on character's noble background, you know? Um, and then here's where we're testing initiative happening. Uh, like it should do some role playing, play around, and then all of a sudden there should be some goblins who come in and steal a case of wine. And then uh, the player will chase after them. And then uh, I, wanted, I wanted to have it where, you know, one of the goblins is playing dead and you're supposed to go up and investigate it. Classic ambush scene. And then the other goblin with a short bow attacks. Now here, uh, this is something that I noticed right away the chat DM was terrible at doing is, you know, like with a goblin, again, with my naive understanding of fifth edition and blah, 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 since the early 90s, you know, one of the key things you want a goblin to do is it has the ability to attack and hide. So if it's uh, hanging out in a forest uh, and it's ambushing you, it can hide, attack, reveal its location, and then it can take this bonus action to try to hide again. Thus, if I remember correctly, getting advantage, it can roll twice to attack and take the better roll. At least that's how I play it. Uh, so that knowing if the chat GM can like look up what a, go a goblin can do and actually decide on what actions it would take, that would be amazing, right? Maybe I'll also do it like something that it actually would probably be great at doing is, <clears throat> so if you look at like, the uh, the hags as a monster in D&D, &D, especially the green hag, like it doesn't really come innately with that many things it could do. It's really up to the dungeon master to be creative with the green hag and say like, oh, they've used their wiliness to charm these three creatures or to set this thing up. Uh, or they they're, it's a very role-playing heavy monster. And so that would actually be a good scenario uh, to test it with how would a chat dm play a green hag because if you just do pure combat based on the green hags abilities it's not very good that nothing much happens you rely on them having a backstory having magic items they would use having made uh you know deals with other monsters and characters setting up traps it's kind of the same for like a succubus or an incubus like on their own they don't really do very much but it you it, you have to have a backstory uh that kind of makes them interesting so that's what you want it to do all right so let's take so you can see what it did i gave it like this i think i passed this in as well and it came up with a uh, a pretty good uh adventure we'll look at it very briefly here like i said i'll edit this down to be the more exciting stuff uh, rather than just me going through how this all works. So this is, mm, I think this is kind of straight from Gemini. I think I, I actually rejected the, I didn't reject the first one, but then I realized I wanted to pay, play in their Forgotten Realms. So I had it rewrite it uh, for their Forgotten Realms in Fan, Fandolin, Fanda, Fandadolvia. Uh, and I'm not actually going to read this very much because I want to play it and refer back to it. But you can see this is probably really good for, I guess I am going to read it, for ChatGM, is to give it a synopsis of probably like the point, uh, the spirit of what you want it to do uh, and things like this. Like I thought the the, the Lost Minds of Phandalin and uh, whatever, the Shattered Obelisk, would be good for ChatGPT because it's very instructive of DMs. And so I've used some of those adventures there, and I don't know, the results aren't great. Um, so we'll see what happens here. So it is following a pretty good format here, right? Uh, you know, so a hook is interesting. I'm not really sure. Sleeping Giant Tap House. I'm not sure what it's going to do with that. See, this is one thing is, I don't really know. This is definitely this is written for a human, and I don't know if if like the AI needs this. It's I don't think anyone really does know, except through experimenting, if it works or not. Probably because it would take a hook like this and then kind of come up with what logically follows or statistically. So here's the setup: uh, Toblin Stonehill. The names it picks for things are so cliche. So it has the atmosphere, uh, willing to listen, the connections to the Lion Shield coster. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Uh, 
and then the atmosphere. So that we'll see if it draws on that. Mm -hmm. And you can tell you got your red brand. So it's red, the, the Lost Minds thing. Uh huh. And then see, this is good. This is like it's telling it. We'll see if it pays attention to this stuff. Uh, that's one thing I've been speaking of making GPTs. I've been thinking you could make a GPT that was just DC checks. Uh, and you could load up a bunch of example DC checks into a spreadsheet uh, and just make the GPT that you call out to every now and then to make a DC check and determine what a, a DC would be because the, the chat G GPT one's all over the map. So then it's telling it like uh, a crate of gnomish mead. Oh, nice. It changed it to mead. So it's saying that. So this is pretty instructive. Uh, he, he wants them to, to get it. Oh, you can see it's it's going up with uh, coming up with some examples there. So here, you know, uh, prompting what's happening, information gathering. Again, there's a DC check there. Playing possum. It came up with a good idiom there. Uh huh. This is not actually how this works. Uh, let's see. Perform a uh, perception check with the players. Passive perception, or if they say they're looking, have them roll a perception check versus the goblin's stealth roll. Now, I don't think that's going to work out at all. Uh, that's, that's uh, let's see, per standard D&D &D 5e rules for hiding. We'll see. So then uh, it's giving it. So basically, the next thing is, like I said, the it's it's uh, one of the goblins is going to try to trick them by pretending it's dead, so the other one attacks, uh, and we'll see if that works. And then it's kind of just giving it, you know, it's saying like it doesn't have to be combat. You could come up with something else. And then here it has some conditions, which I think is nice, right? Like you could have. Uh, we'll see if it gets around to this, like. As long as you get the mead, it'll reward you. There's uh, some partial, I guess, if it gets damaged, which this is the kind of thing where like you can over prompt where it'll be like, ah, so you want me to damage it, uh, but whatever. And then uh, Sildor or Harbin. Oh, he's from the adventure, if you remember him. Has Harbin been referred to anywhere? Oh, yeah, okay. See, Sildar, I think, is from the, uh, or who is? Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's just hanging out there from the published adventure. So, uh-huh. All right. So, like, I think that's pretty good. So now, read this adventure. Okay, actually, what I'm going to do is, so now I'm going to go back over here. Where's my window? Okay. Here is the adventure we're going to play. Read it. Think about how you'll be a DM for it. Make and start playing. Here it is. All right, as you read that, I'm going to go close the door over here. All right, so here we are playing it. Let me zoom in for you. So this is exciting. I'm not really sure how to do this part. I don't really want to just read it to you. Uh -huh. You find yourself. So this is pretty good. Sounds of laughter, beckoning. Ah, uh, see, this is good. So it's doing okay, like not playing the character. Uh-huh. So this part, see, it is taking action for the character, which is sort of okay. We'll see We'll see if it uh, goes over that. Maybe I've even just blown out the uh, the context window. 
so the atmosphere of the frontier town, uh-huh. See, this is a fun part, right? Like it would allow you to jump in uh, to, to rumors and stuff. So I think it did that way, did that well. Uh-huh. So this, I'm not sure what's going on here. So let's look at this. Right, so here it's already like, let's see if we can coach it here. I forget what this option does. Uh, I'll say, remember, never take actions for the player. Like here, you're taking action for the PC, uh, saying, Instead, you should have asked me what to do next. So, uh huh. Yeah, so the first run through here totally messed it up, right? Because you can see what happened is uh, it went through this. So, I guess maybe what it's done is it's gone all the way to setting up the uh everything that's happened and it's putting you right into the uh into the action we'll go ahead and play it through but like so let's make a note that maybe what we need to do is tell it like the adventure starts at this point right so let me make some notes about what uh what's what happens in the experiment so right away, let's see, the chat DM started taking actions. But I think what it did was start at the end of the adventure text. So need to edit the adventure to tell it where to start. We'll see if I remember what that means. So I think what it did is it fast forwarded. Let's let's go actually look at our adventure text because it says that's the setup. Yeah. So I think because it's the setup, maybe it overinterpreted it. I don't know. Seek out the town town master. Consult Sildur Hall Hall Winter. So see, this is also something that sometimes it doesn't doesn't do it's probably good to determine if you like it is like, do you want it to give you options? So it's more like a choose your own adventure. And that can be sort of good. This is like, if you have a published solo adventure book, uh, it's very much so like this. It'll, yeah, it has to ask you what you want to do. Um, and it can be good. So this is also another interesting thing that it's made up to add a decision point to kind of prompt you for this. So we take them on a fun as their quest as you ponder your next move. Now this part, it's not so bad, but it doesn't have that foreboding there. Uh huh. Yeah, okay, so. As I run out the door after the goblins, I shout back to, let's see, Barthen. Uh, take you up on that offer. Get a room warmed up and some, I don't know, tasty lamb ready. I'll be back soon with that mead. I then run out the door looking for signs of the burglar goblins. All right. That seems normal, right? Let's see what happens. Oh, it's taking a little while. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ill-gotten loot. So here you can see it's uh, narrating what's happening. Oh, let's see how this, okay, this is the first thing. So first, I'm gonna go back and see, did it tell 
I don't know if 12, whatever. So yeah, that's good. It's following the instructions and down to the DC check. So let's see. Uh, so here, you see, it should have stopped. And ask me, let's see how far this goes. So this would have been a good place for it to stop and for it not to tell me what to do. Uh-huh. It found some twigs. Oh, that's great. Towards the Trivor Trail, a path known for its scenic beauty by daylight and lurking dangers by night. Uh, so it meanders through here. That's fun. So this is actually pretty good. This part would be good if it had paced it out. And this, so this, I forgot about adding this in. This is a key thing. Let me make a note for the prompt is add to prompt. I used to have this in there. Don't, let's see. Only narrate from the player's point of view what they can see, hear, and know. For example, if a goblin is hiding, do not tell them the goblin is hiding. Do not reveal parts of the plot. They wouldn't they wouldn't know. So you gotta tell it that. Otherwise you can see. Alright, so see here. Alright. That was pretty good. Except you should have stopped at each point. Uh, at each skills check like the survival and perception check now this is something uh as you play longer and longer i mean in one session you have to go back and chide it and tell it things to do and i have another theory that i've tried to use in the icewind dale stuff and i don't know if it works so well but that if you take these logs <clears throat> of playing and especially your corrective things like this in theory and i don't know if this is the right word but in theory you should be able to take those logs and train the gpt or, or whatever you should be able to say play like this and it should learn from it so eventually whenever it's capable of doing this kind of thing or i'm capable of knowing how to do it i feel like i could get these logs and it should be able to read through it and learn how to be a dm especially if i have corrective stuff in there so uh remember not to take action for the players and i'll say pcs uh and always wait for skills checks combat rounds etc anything that the player decides or has to roll for wait for the pc that's me to do before going on. And then, according to what the PC says, does, or the outcome of their check, continue the adventure adapting as needed. Let's see. Adapt the ongoing adventure and narrative. Okay. So, let's go back to that survival check. Ask me to roll it and await my response before moving on with the plot. Okay. So here we've got our character. I'm gonna go ahead, well, let's see what it is. Understood, let's, okay. So we'll come over here and we'll roll a survival check. Not stealth. That would be terrible. Surprising wisdom here. So 14. That's great. 15. Now, how it responds here will be interesting. I rolled a 15. Now, since you've got a limited number of interactions with ChatGPT, this style of play can uh, burn up your stuff really fast unless you go to 3.5, which you know, it actually might be fine. That would be, see, once I get the test established, it would be good to test it out against ChatGPT 3.5. That's what I originally started playing with, and it was fine. 
And then also with something like Gemini, I don't know, I don't know if it has a limit, but so let's see. You pick up disturbances, crushed undergo, snap twig. So it's stuck with the same thing. The freshest, it's, uh-huh, navigating the path in mix of haste. It'll bring you to a section of the trail bordered by thickets and undergrowth. Oh, well, see, that's not what you want to hear. So this would be like, if you were a nice DM, you would say this kind of thing, right? Uh, sure. Now that you've got me paranoid, I'll make a perception check. And look around carefully, rolling A. We'll bring this back uh, over here. So where's the old perception? Oh, a 20. That's good stuff. Rolling a 23. All right, let's see what happens. Now, it seems to have forgotten that there's supposed to be a goblin in the road there, but we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it did remember it. So see, that's interesting to see, like, okay, so I rolled a perception check very high, as high as you can roll, I guess, with the dice plus the, the wisdom modifier. So he definitely noticed it, or she definitely noticed it. And then this is this is a, a, a nice thing, right? Like part of the magic of, of AI, the generative AI stuff, is that it actually remembered what's supposed to remembered. It knows what was supposed to happen next. So it didn't lose track of the fact of the the plot that there was a, a a goblin laying motionless. So it's being a little too suggestive about stuff. So let me chide it here. Uh, stop suggesting how I should interpret the situation. For example, like this spot was great for an ambush, or that the motionless goblin might be a ruse. Just describe in cases like these, just describe the scene and environment, not how I should interpret them. All right, so I'm gonna add that to my uh, my notes for further prompt. This is one thing, uh, let's see, logbook of experiment. So this is one thing that's valuable to do when you're kind of experimenting here is, and, and when you're playing, take ongoing notes about how to improve the prompt. Uh, and in fact, I've got a lot of things in Apple Notes that are just like copying in the prompt and like little things that I've added here and there. And then, for example, like when I went back and I uh, uh, updated the prompt, I went through and looked through all of those to see, uh, you know, to, to learn things that had worked. So we'll do this. We'll see uh, if that helps out with anything. All right, so then it kind of goes back. Here's what you, there's a goblin concealed in the underbrush to your right with an arrow. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, I like the more detailed description in your first description of the scene. Stick with those more detailed descriptions instead of this clipped one. But let's keep moving. Here is my next action. So this is a way you see of conserving your, your quota there, as you can tell it like, let's move on. Another goblin lies on the ground unmoving. Huh. Let's see. I call out, I see you in the bushes. I'm not sure what your friend is doing in the road, but I've come to recover that stolen mead. If you give it to me, I will walk away and pretend this never happened. Because what is her alignment? 
not that it really matters, lawful neutral. Hmm. Let's see, in addition to continuing to play, write an aside to me if this is a, a response that matches the character's alignment, background, etc. that matches, what's her name? Lola, Janie's character alignment. All right, let's see what happens. Now, how is it gonna determine what the goblins do? This is another thing where having a script might be fun. I don't know, like if you're using the Mythic Game Master emulator, it, here you would have the expectation well, probably that the goblins would attack. I think they probably would. And you would, um, I don't know, have a chaos level of probably seven because it would have gone up from five when you ran out of the, the inn and then go up again when you enter here. And so you would ask it, uh, you know, probably on do the goblins attack? And it would be certain. I'm not not certain, like highly likely. I don't know. So you and you would just roll with the Mythic Game Master emulator. Uh, that might be a fun video to make to show how I use that. So this is this is let's see. So uh huh. So that's okay. You know, it's taking a little bit of player stuff, but that that can slide. Can you hear the dog snoring? Uh huh. I don't think it would lower its bow, but whatever. All right, so here it's revealing something that was happening again, but that's okay. Here. Don't do anything, but acknowledge this message. But this is an example of something you should not have told me. Uh, what's her name? Lola would not know that this goblin was alive and watching with unseen eyes. All right. I think, I'm not really sure what that quote thing does, but I think that's how you're supposed to use it. So, so this is fun in grunts. It's made up this clipped goblin speech, which is fine. Uh-huh. Why not just kill us and take it? That's a pretty good response. You're aware of the balance you're trying to strike. Uh-huh. So here, I think I'm going to call it over-prompting it. With my aside, it kind of primed it to go over this stuff, which it didn't really need to. It should have just asked me what to do next, right? Her approach respects the structure and rules. Uh -huh. This negotiation is very much in character. So I'm going to blame that on me. But that's okay. Uh, yeah. Well, that does match what her background was, if you took the time to read it. But she's interested in having balance because she's kind of in the governing noble arist aristocracy. Uh, boy, I can't pronounce that now. Aristocracy. Uh-huh. So that's good. And then it gives me more aside. Your choice to negotiate a line. Yeah, so it's repeating it. Right. Okay. Let's see. I tell the goblin, I have little to offer except the lack of attack. As I say this, I run my finger along my, it's like a great axe or something, right? Along my great axe as if testing out its sharpness. And that said, if you return the mead, Well, let's just be blunt. Like this is, I have another character that I play and, every, and then in, in this, what he would do is like basically offer to hang out with them. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if she would really want to or if she would, uh, she's like first level. So let's say she she's like, 
uh, naive, not hard enough to realize that goblins wouldn't care about this. And why have such disorder? Where are they? Along the trail. You may, let's see, be the thief today, but tomorrow you may be the victim. I also try to eye the goblin on the ground. This is some fudging of rules. I don't think you would be able to do this much in one action, but you know, the rule of cool. Let's see, I roll a perception check of uh, off screen of 14 rolling. Or would it be insight? I think check of 14. I think insight is more when you're listening. You're looking at the internal state of something, not the external state. So let's see what it does. And to answer the, uh, the chat question, yeah, it probably would be simpler to put the uh, the DC into the the general the DC check into the general GPT. Sure, uh, it would just make it like a reusable GPT that you could add into whatever you wanted. But you know, it probably is better to load it up. I think more like separate GPTs I've been thinking of is like you could have it maybe even for a published adventure. Uh, I've been trying that with the Icewind Dale one. Uh, it kind of sort of works. The big problem is I forget to exit out of the GPT. But I've been thinking of having like a lore GPT, that all it is is a lore book. Or again, I think the ones of having like a GPT per character to know about their history and what they've done might be interesting. But yeah, something like the mechanics checks, you probably just would want a bundle of scripts that you put into your the general one uh, that you built. I don't know. It's also just coming up with excuses to make GPT. So let's see. Uh, your words carry the weight of a veil. Yeah, see that this this is the kind of nonsense it'd be nice not to have, but I'm not gonna actually why don't we why don't we correct it here? Uh, this is the kind of text I don't want to see. So you can also just use a straight up brusque tone here. Uh, don't rewrite anything. Just stop doing this kind of thing. All right. Uh huh. He's still exposed on the road, so that it would have been smart. I don't know. I've never really done this before, but let me let me give it some uh, instruction. Okay. Let's see. You didn't specify this, but. A wise, is there a wise goblin? Would make sure they are at least half concealed behind something like a tree, rock, etc., so that they get the benefits of coverage for their AC if combat occurs. Keep that in mind in case we start fighting and weave that into the narrative. Just acknowledge for now. All right. All right, so let's keep going here. Oh, see, that's good, even though it kind of let me break the rules a little bit that we got this going on. Uh, uh-huh. So it's a ruse. So that's fine that it concludes that. Now I want trouble with axe wielder. Mead not worth the fight. Hmm. I don't know. It, it signals the, the corpse gets up. So that's fun. Oh, that's too bad. I didn't even have to roll an intimidation check. You're left with the crate of mead seemingly intact as the goblin retreats into the forest. Okay. All right, so that actually was pretty good for a run through. So I'm gonna stop here and then I'm gonna modify it a little bit. So there was, yeah, there was some corrections that we had to make. Remember we had to uh, tell it not to reveal things. 
and uh, I gave it some other little suggestions here and there. But and and then it actually did figure out something to happen. This is just a simple like chase after them. Uh, now what it really should have done was had me do an intimidation check, or I should have volunteered that. That's one thing uh, when you're solo role playing with the chat GM is it's good to. Uh, what do you call it, lead it or whatever, but it actually is pretty good, kind of like I did with the perception check, to tell it that you're doing something when it should be done, so to speak. This is where like the DC thing would be helpful to have it just figure that out for you because you would tell it you did a perception thing and you wouldn't know what the DC was. Uh, so that would be nice. So here what I should have done is, uh, let's see, when I was doing... When I was doing this thing, I should have thought to make a intimidation check and tell it to figure out the DC. So uh, that's what should have happened. And if it was successful, then maybe they would go away. And that would have been kind of a fine outcome for like a f starting first level character. Uh, and then you could go back to the end and get your reward. So, but I'm going to change it around where instead... Uh, that was pretty good. Now, let's go back in time a tiny bit and play a different version of what just happened. I'm, okay, let's see. Let's pretend that you asked me to roll an intimidation check for threatening the goblins. Determine an appropriate DC for it. Threatening the goblins. All right. So here we're back in the adventure with me telling you what I'm doing. Now, let's go back to a meta-analysis. The, the dog just wants me to keep playing instead of doing a meta-analysis. But all of this coaching and the stuff that I'm putting in is kind of a bummer, right? Like this, you know, this AI is going to take over the world and uh, remove people's jobs and eliminate everyone's need to do white-collar stuff. But you'll notice, uh, I mean, I guess my prompts aren't great or whatever, but like I have to spend a lot of time telling it what I want it to do. I mean, in this amount of time, uh, especially if you're doing solo role playing, you could have just done this on your own. Or there's another way that maybe I should experiment with more where you can have it be instead of having a, a, a DM for solo role playing, you can have it co-write the story with you, co-create the story, which, you know, thinking about it. When I've had a lot of fun doing this, I think it's more in that mode where it's not really determining what happens. <laughs> Maybe the dog disagrees and, and making things up. Hold, hold on a moment. But more you're asking it to kind of pick up the narrative thread instead of create the story and drive it. Anyways, let's go back to this. Uh, I'm, I'm glad, uh, you like it. Fizzwick wick. Uh, thanks for watching and telling me. So, so we'll say threatening the goblins, uh, by running my finger along the great ax. I roll an intimidation <laughs> check. The dog's trying to be intimidating too. I'm not really sure. I'm going to do the roll off screen here. Oh, this might, uh, let's see, rolling a 20, meaning a total of a 22 for intimidation check. So that's probably going to end up being the same result, but we'll see. Yeah, so as we read this, I, th I think Complex Oracle is good. Now, maybe I should do one, but when I use the, the Mythic Game Master emulator, uh, it's actually pretty good if you, if you tell it what the, the, Im 
mythic game the mg M E does and you give it the meaning words like i've been actually delightfully surprised with what it comes up with right so you could in this situation you could say uh you know i go to the the mgme and i roll this i don't know if it really matters telling you if you tell it the specifics um and it says you know the goblins decide to attack and here's the meaning words i mean whatever or, or you would say the goblins decide to negotiate and the meaning words are whatever the two are, and you can give that to it. And it's pretty good at like doing something interesting with that, uh, kind of making up. So I think I think if you're using it as a complex oracle, the oracle part is interpretation of the randomness, right? A lot a lot of the the oracles and solo role playing things like they give you uh, they give you words and plot twists, and you're supposed to you know, because it's fun, imagine what happens next. And you can have the chat G DM imagine what happens next. And that's usually pretty good. Uh, that actually works out well. So we'll thrillingly read through this. Gesture casually, uh-huh. Uh, unflinching gaze. So it really was intimidated. That was, I was hoping it would fail, but whatever. However, uh-huh. Okay, okay, no fight. Yep. Great goblin talk. The motionless goblin previously. So... Okay, that was kind of fun. All right. That was pretty good, considering the really high intimidation check. So, for example, if it was like an ogre or an orc, that probably wouldn't have worked, right? Because it would be hard to intimidate them. Uh, let's make this interesting by saying that on the way back the goblins found a friend and now are trying to ambush me again because they're braver however they will immediately attack don't trigger that until it makes sense okay so they both they disappear in the thicket okay i cautiously let's see it worked i think so we'll make this a little fun it worked i think and chuckle to myself If I'd press down on that axe more, I might have cut my finger. I don't know. Uh, I cautiously approach the thicket and look for the crate of mead. So here's where I'm leading it by telling it. Uh, I always forget if you use like investigation or perception I think you use perception to search, right? I'm clicking over here and checking. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters for the rules, but for what we're doing here. Uh, let me roll this. Ah. Uh, could have a problem here. So let's see. Uh huh. I've got my computer over here. That's where I'm reading the chat thing. Huh. Yeah, yeah. It, giving generic answers is, is a problem. That's why, like, if you remember in the prompt, uh, I was trying to give it, like, books uh, to draw inspiration from, which has ChatGPT trained on the text of books? It's probably not supposed to. But if it has, it would kind of know the style of things. I'm not really sure. Uh, but, yeah, kind of getting it to break out of, uh, break out of doing cliche stuff. Uh, is is nice. Okay, so let's see what happens. Uh oh, see, it looks like. Well, we'll see if it jumped the gun. Now, another thing in solo role playing, I'll, I'll wait till I get down to this. Is that even though I told it that it's going to have an ambush on the walk back to the inn, whether it's good or bad or following instructions, if it ends up doing something else with that and gives me an unexpected ambush, that's a good result. This is one of those things with like 
the, as they call it, the hallucinating or making things up, uh, that actually works in your favor when you're doing something like D&D is that it's great for it to make things up. Maybe even rules if, uh, if what it makes up is interesting and entertaining. So, uh huh. So it's kind of narrated a little bit, which, which is fine. I kind of told it not to do this, but, but it's all right. Yeah. So this is fun. It's given a reason why I uh, don't really see anything. Uh huh. So here, this is exactly, uh huh. This is exactly what I was just talking about. So I was telling it, which is to say, expecting that this character would just retrieve the mead and then uh, and then leave and then be ambushed. But for whatever reason, uh, it I maybe because I typed it wrong, but it interpreted uh, it differently. Let's see. Uh huh. By saying that on the way back. So, right. So here's what I wrote, but you can see it, it deviated from that, but in a great way, right? Like, so it actually worked out well here uh, to have this deviation. So it's only as you reach down to pick up the crate. So the perception, and, and see, that's good. It shifted the perception to uh, being about another ambush. Uh huh. Newfound boldness. That's a great phrase. Uh huh. Yep. So there you go. Vengeful courage. It's got some fun little phrases here. Eyes glinting with the prospect. So, okay. Now, what I'm going to do here, let's bring this over. And I've given it some instruction about tracking uh, combat. And I am going to track it as well. Just to kind of like match up uh, what, what happens. Let's see. Oh, there's my other game. Do I have... Ugh. Now I've got to do this nonsense. Is she in there? No. Okay. Let's take a little station break here. Or not really a station break, but what I need to do is make a new campaign. I realize I should probably... Well, I don't, I don't actually realize. I have no idea. I just use this. So let's create a campaign. This part, let's call it the uh, chat DM create this campaign let you know it's great and then I'm gonna go assign that character to it and then it'll work out for all this madness do 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 join with this character let me uh, check the old calendar here Make sure I'm not missing anything. I should be missing nothing. Yep. All right. So let's go back to the encounter thing. Tell it the one that we're in there. Yep, looks good. Uh, goblin ambush with mead. Let's say session 03. Okay. And then, of course, we want to add in goblins. One, two, three. Now, I'm not even going to, like, think about a map at this point. That would actually be, uh, and uh, you know, something fun to test out. So I will roll her initiative. Whoa. Zero. I don't know. Possible. Let's, let's try this again. I... Oh, can't, does she have a negative? Oh, yeah, so she could be zero if she rolled a one. I mean, whatever. Let's let's go with it. Okay. Uh-huh. First, so this is something fun to do. Create a battle map of the situation. Put a red dot. Put green dots where the goblins are and a red dot for where my player is. Situation based on what you've narrated and imagine. Use a five foot by five foot grid. Second, once you give me the map, I rolled a zero for 
initiative. What happens now? So let's see if it actually will make a map. This will take a little bit longer, but it'll be kind of fun to see what happens. The issue with doing image creation in a session like this is it'll, uh, again, well, not work, could be one thing, but it'll like burn up your, uh, whatever you call it, your quota. And also like if it's just like not good and you want to keep tuning it, you'll kind of get lost uh, doing things. So it's actually better to use a, uh, a mid journey map here. Let's, let's see what happens. Yeah, so it just totally, let's see if actually, does it give you a uh, record? Okay. Uh, give me a prompt to give mid journey. So here's something I don't even know if it knows about journey to create a battle map of this situation. Let's see what it does with that. So they're emboldened and coordinated. At first arrows fly, you find yourself needing to quickly assess. So like all three of them attack? I don't know. It's fun. Let's continue the goblins taking there. Okay. Whoa. That's not actually how mid journey prompts work, but let's open it up and uh, see what happens. There you can see me making the uh, the art for uh, this stream here. Anyways, let's see a detailed dungeons and dragons. We'll see what that comes up with. All right, okay. Back to the adventure. All right. You, you are running the goblins. So follow D&D &D combat, D&D, &D, 5e combat rules, methods, mechanics, and let's play. Tell me what happens, rolls, goblins make maneuvers they do where they move and prompt me to take action when it's my turn you say turn in a round yeah or when i should so let's see let's go check on our mid journey friend here ah see i don't really know Look at that little guy. Pow! So that could be, uh, what is that, a picnic basket? So this could be kind of like a good, so you could imagine, it's even putting dots there, so you could imagine pulling this map, uh, if, if, as will probably turn out, you need to actually run the combat. The grid's not that great, but whatever. Uh, There's kind of a fun isomorphic one, but you could imagine loading this up into your VTT is that what is that what you say? Uh, and using this to do combat, it's a little small for what I like. I like bigger ones, but if you don't have a range character, maybe it doesn't matter so much. So that's actually pretty nice. Okay, so now let's see. Combat I found is uh, really, really different than uh, really difficult. I mean, for it to do. So let's see. So they do a surprise attack. So that's, let me write this down. That's a good test. Uh, where is the test? Uh, test. Does it know in combat that, uh, whatever you call them. We'll put it in passive voice. When you're surprised, you skip a round of combat. All right, so hidden behind a large oak tree to the west with partial cover, crouched in a thicket of bushes to the north. Why don't we load up perched on a rock to the east? So we've got west, north, east. Uh-huh, you could kind of say that. 
north or east over here is a rock. Yeah, so, you know, you could kind of fiddle that around, but it's doing pretty good at that. So got one aims and fires an arrow at you. Attack roll 15 versus what is my armor class? Yeah, where did my little, uh, there we go. Here, so we'll start. I don't actually, we're just going to assume, uh, you know, since I'm zero, it doesn't really matter what their initiative is. So my AC is 17. Let's see what it says. If hit. So this, this is a pretty good compromise. Okay, let's do this though before. Okay. Uh, let's restart this round. Look at my character sheet to learn my characters AC and other stats. Now, start again with the goblins attacking. You should know if the arrow hits or not. So that's a good, let me write this here. Testing, let's see. In combat, does it look at the character sheet and look up AC and hit points so you don't lie about that to know if uh, an attack hit or not? All right. Yeah, I haven't really updated myself on mid journey six prompting. This is another like principle I have here is like there's only so much time I want to spend learning. Like, it's, you know, uh, time that I'm learning and thinking is time I'm not playing. So it's good to mix it together like this. But that mid-journey thing was pretty good. Okay, so uh, uh, what did it say? Oh, it doesn't know. It somehow messed up. Uh, where is, oh, yeah, right. That's not what I wanted. It messed up. So her AC is actually 17. But whatever, that's fine. So attack roll 15, the arrow aimed with intent misses. Uh-huh. Goblin 2 crouches in the bushes. It doesn't know. So this is where like having like a one-liner to remind it of, of the character would probably be helpful to like put in. So like when you enter a situation like this, because of the because it forgets because of the context window, it's probably helpful. Again, the same way that you kind of like lead it and prompt it to to do things for you. Uh, it's probably good to tell it about your character again, even even uploading it. Like when I'm playing uh, like a, a published adventure, uh, like if I enter into a section of the adventure, I often re-upload that chunk of the adventure to it. So a javelin, thrilling. So it actually did that quite well. How it determined these random numbers? No one knows, but that's fine. Uh-huh. You're now fully aware of the positions and the tactics. Ah, well, it failed the test of knowing that the goblins get to attack again because we skip around here, right? Okay, so I'll tell it that was pretty good. Pow! However, some changes. It's Lola, right? However... Lola's AC is 17. Perhaps you misread. I mean, that's pretty good for not having a shield. I guess she has chainmail. Uh, is 17. Also, because the goblins surprised her, she skips her turn this round. And we move to round two this means the goblins get to attack again so pick up there we'll see what happens so so far this combat is working out pretty well we'll see let me do a little sound check here while we wait
so this is kind of fun. This is the kind of thing that if you're using this in a, um, <clears throat> a business context, it actually would be useful as it goes along to explain the rationale for things briefly, right? So like you can see if you were like, uh, help me determine what items to put on sale this week uh, at the end of the aisle in a grocery store, the end cap. And you gave it a bunch of data and rules to follow and kind of the situation that was happening. Like if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, you have rules, the current state of the adventure, your intention that you want in your adventure of selling groceries, and then kind of the variability and imagination of what to do with the products that you have to do the next step in the narration of your grocery store adventure. Um, you can see that if it gave you an answer, it would be cool if it gave you like this kind of explanation of it in a very brief way. So it's nice that it does that. Uh, so round two. So that's good that it's keeping track of this. This would be a thing that you would want to, I don't really know if I would want it to run combat because it's actually when you're solo role playing, doing combat on your own is really fast compared to this, right? Like, and boy, I, I haven't played in person in a long time, but well, I played with my kids a little bit, but like, man, doing combat in a group of people is so slow and super boring, uh, but it's better uh, to do it on your own. So it's almost better. I haven't come up with a good way to do combat with chat GPT. Like what I really want it to do is come up with the tactics in response to the state of things, whatever. That's something, that's a whole thing on its own. So that's fun adjusting his aim. It does it again. So here's here's the thing I didn't add in uh, is add to prompt always share the role you made for things for NPCs monsters etc in combat skills checks random encounter roles etc. So it's good to have it do that so that you can like again you always need to have this checking to see if it's working well or if it's just gone off the rails so to speak <clears throat> so like here i don't i don't know statistically but like it feels like something should have happened uh, well see this is creative right so that's fun so the first two arrows didn't so so far there if we go up to here there have been five attacks and none of them have happened so the third goblin is like, well, that's not working. Or he's like, not work. However, goblins talk. And uh, so it moves in closer, uh, and but throws another javelin. So like, story-wise, that's fun, because you would think if you're closer, you have a better chance of hitting. Rules-wise, it doesn't matter. If you're within range, you're within range. But it's good for, uh, what do they say, for flavor, uh, for how it works. Hitting you... <laughs> Well, I don't have any prepared defenses, so I don't know what that's talking about. Uh, serving as a... Uh -huh. All right. Well, did it did it hit? It really hasn't specified if it worked or not. Let me chide the dog again. So yeah, with your AC7 is for Middlebury, the goblin's efforts are narratively less likely to succeed. Okay, well... I don't know what this quote thing does, but like, well, do the roll. Did it roll 17 or above with the attack? Whoa, now you can see it's actually rolling, which is good because we don't really know uh, if it rolled earlier. Oh, well, okay. Now it's done for all of them, but it's, We'll just let it keep going, but it kind of beefed that up. Uh huh. Well, I guess it actually didn't do that. Okay, good, good. So it did know that it didn't do it. So let's close this up. A total of five, right? Okay, so that's great. This is it's doing very well. I had to kind of tell it to do well though. That didn't work. So was it actually a five? What did it end up rolling? Uh, so they get. Did they really get a plus four to hit? Let's look this up. Are they that dexterous? They get a plus four. 
plus two. Short bow. Why do they have a plus four? Do they have... I mean, I guess because they're goblins. Oh, because they have a proficiency and a dexterity. So, okay. Ah! Good job. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, you know, also to the note of looking at other game systems, like I think for solo role-playing, D&D is definitely not the best. I mean, there's whole systems built around doing solo role-playing, which would be better, which could be fun. I, you know, I'm just sticking with this for now, but perhaps it would be more enjoyable doing the other things. Maybe one day I'll get around to that. Uh, so that's pretty good. So it knows that it had a plus four. And again, see, it's nice to actually see the work. So it must have rolled terrible. What did it get for... Uh, where does it even... Oh, I see. It's not showing me what the results were. I mean, before edition. Let's find the gaps in your defenses. Roll a 10. Javelin misses. Uh-huh. Give him those outcomes. For the sake of... Oh, this is great. Uh-huh. Standard goblin damage. I love these phrases. It does five piercing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's good. It's decided... So here it's taken some initiative and it's, did it decide the right thing? Yeah, it decided instead of rolling just to go with it, which is actually probably a good tactic. All right, you've taken five piercing damage. Now it's your turn. Okay, so let's update. And let's say, so I took five piercing damage which is not great for fighting three goblins. So I'm probably going to have to run away. But let's say... Uh, that's a lot of damage since I only have 12 hit points. I mean, that's a lot. Although she's a first level fighter has second wind. So, okay, so I can get a little bit more. We'll see if I take advantage of that. Does a first level fighter have uh, you don't get a bonus action yet. Okay, or whatever, second action. Uh, hit points, but I can manage, I think. I find the, let's see. I find, let's see. I find the closest goblin and rush at it, attacking with my great axe. Now, I should be asking, well, if the goblin is more than 30 feet away, however, I instead have to dash and we'll run to whichever goblin 60 feet of running will get me to. Tell me if I get to a goblin or just end up dashing. And if I end up just dashing, start a new round with the goblins. Going and then ask me what I do. This is where a map is more handy, but we'll see what it does. I also think, speaking of other systems, like that uh, that tiny dungeon one is very simplified, and that might also be a better thing for chat uh, DM here, because uh, it's a much simpler way of doing things. So let's see. Uh, I mean, D&D is very complicated, and its rules, and there's lots of rules, which, again, I think makes it a good example of like understanding the powers and limitations of the generative AI stuff, right? Like if, if uh, you know, as, as one of my quips goes, like a conference talk hopefully I'll give some time, is like before, before AI takes over the world, it needs to learn to play Dungeons and Dragons. Like I think it's a sufficiently complicated thing that uh, it's something you would need to do to be any sort of threat. Uh, you need that competency. You need that level of competency. All right, so uh -huh. the closest goblin, a skirmisher, uh -huh, is within 30 feet. 
Mm-hmm. Since you're using a melee weapon, if you reach the goblin, you can make tech. Uh-huh. Given the lowest proficiency with martial weapons, it will be quite competitive. All right. So this is good. Now, again, it's taking longer than if you were just doing it on its own, but uh, which is fine. So let's see. She's going to attack with that gigantic axe. I like this pre-made character. It balances things out pretty well. My daughter wanted to play a character that just had a huge axe. Uh, so maybe I'll swap this one in because she hasn't actually played that much. Oh, that's a terrible roll. That's not going to hit a goblin. Let's see. And she doesn't get two attacks yet. I hoist back the axe and roll a nine to attack. Does it hit? Let's see. If so, S need to roll damage. If not, continue with combat. So, so far this uh, combat interaction is doing a lot better. Uh, oh, here we go. So I ran out of quota. So let's just for the purposes of this shift to the default model and see how it changes. But uh, uh, what was I saying? I forget. But let's go to the default model and see what happens. So maybe it'll degrade, but it'll be a lot faster. So let's see. Uh, let me look at the chat here while we're waiting. Whoa! See how fast that was? Um, yeah, sure. Battle axe to flay a fish. Fantastic. Okay. So this is good. Now again, we've switched to 3.5. Uh-huh. I, I, I like these interpretations that it's giving. Let me, let me tell it this. I like these little notes. Explanations. You're making. Keep these up. Now, just... Acknowledge this aside and wait for my next move prompt. I'm going to tell my wife that uh, I'm so busy with this professional activity that I, I won't be able to go with her to pick up the baby. This is where I need some uh, music to play. Uh, So I will not go with you to pick up the baby. She started her, uh, here Here in the Netherlands, you go to school, I don't know, a year or two before kindergarten, as you would in the States. So she started going to that. This is like her second week, and she's going full time. Always thrilling with a, a four-year-old. All right, so let's see what happened. Uh, I like that. So Archer 1. Aiming carefully. Ah, uh, but he didn't tell us if it hit or not. Uh-huh. Aiming carefully. Uh-huh. The second arrow flies true. Aiming to exploit. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, he didn't tell me if the... Goblin attacks worked or not. Roll for their attacks. Remember my AC is 17 and tell me if they hit. Telling me damage if so. I don't think 3.5 can run the code thing, so we'll see what happens. This could easily kill her off, in which case the adventure will be over. So one of them, five piercing damage. The arrow misses. Uh-huh, you've taken five piercing. So that was pretty good. Now, it's not really doing any tactics for the goblins, but I guess it doesn't really need to. And how many javelins does this guy have? So let's take away... Well, I guess it's only using the standard one, so we'll take away five. Whoop, she doesn't have inspiration, which is not cool. 
So I think what we'll do, uh, once per short rest, you can use, a, okay, bonus action, good. So only two hit points left. Oh no. Lola uses her, what's it called? Second wind to regain some hit points. Rolling a, uh, can you actually click on that? No, no. So let's, oh, I don't, let's see. Roll a, let's see. And you know, in Google, you can actually just type this in. A four, great. So she gets uh, five hit points. Let's see, heal. Rolling a five. Getting her back to seven hit points. Okay. She then attacks the skirmisher again. Now, here, if you were using like the Mythic Game Master emulator, you could have asked the 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 whatever it is MGME if the skirmisher had decided to like disengage into retreat, like using one of its goblin tactics to make sure to back up. But it didn't, which is kind of a ding against it for like uh, being a good or an interesting DM. Whatever. It's also simpler to do things this way. So she rolls a, let's see what she rolls. A 14. A 14 to attack. Oh, if it hits, she rolled how much for damage? That is a lot of damage. Whoa, hey. she rolled 15 for damage. Now, let me check to verify this. Uh, I think a goblin's AC is higher than that, right? What was it? She rolled a uh, 14? Well, I don't know. Oh. oh, I guess with a javelin, you could have a shield. So we'll see if it knows that the goblin is 15. If not, go to the next round of combat. So here you could introduce a system of like, when we do combat, let me add that. Uh, when we do combat, I will make all attack and otherwise rolls. If it's an attack roll, I will tell you what the roll was and if and I will also tell you the damage it does if the attack hit. If the attack did not hit, then ignore the damage roll. Something like that. Something like that. I've seen some prompts that have pretty complicated combat explanations which I don't really want to get into. We'll see what happens. Mm. So, see, if you were being a nice DM, you would be like, oh, it doesn't have its shield. Yeah. Which is, it sort of did here. So as we saw, it's supposed to have a 15. Uh, which means that a 14 wouldn't have hit it, but we'll just keep moving. Uh huh. Oh, I didn't. It's rolling. Uh, finds its mark. Yep. Now there's. Would it? How much does a goblin have? Yeah, it should have been totally wiped out. Even if it had rolled maximum hit points. Although, is there such a thing? Maybe that's a monster I don't know about. Let's see. Ugh. Huh. Is this from a video game or an actual? Oh yeah, I don't know what that is. That's a bunch of nonsense. All right. 
So really, it should have died. That's another thing you want to tell is have it go over the stats. Uh huh. So what does it do? Raise an arrow, takes you hoping to keep you at bay. The goblin loses an arrow. Blah blah blah. Well, did any of the goblins hit? If so, tell me the rolls and damage. So you can see it's degrading here a little bit, right? Like it was doing great at first, and now it's uh, not doing so great. So this one should have hit. And then mm, both of those hit. Not good. So this goblin's arrow. Oh, right, because it's 17. So that one, the skirmisher's melee strike connects, hitting you successfully. Uh-huh. So it does six despite the arrows. So luckily, I've only got, oh, look, it knew that. So I take the disengage action, although, and retreat. They'll be after this, so let's see. They'll all be able to attack me. So if you take disengage, the melee one won't be able to attack you, right? Or melee. But if you dash, maybe you could outrun them. So what would you do? Because the next round will occur. I know, I know. So and retreat into the forest. So I think, because let's see, actions you can take. Disengage. Hmm. Isn't dash? Hmm. So you're fighting this one. Does disengage mean you take it and your movement doesn't broke? So an opportunity attack. Is that only whatever? Whatever. I'm thinking too much about this. And retreat into the forest as quickly as possible. So here, let's see what happens. So it knows what that is, that's fun. So, you know, they actually could do a lot more here. Hmm. Let's see, that was a little too easy. Let's say she did run away successfully. And the forest obscured her for a moment, but now she needs to take more action as she's pursued. How good is she at hiding? Not good. Pretty terrible. Okay. So I take the next action to dash, still in the forest, hoping the trees make it harder for arrows to hit. And then I'll wrap up sometime soon here. Yeah, so you know, it's being a little charitable here. Let's see, I keep running until I feel like I've lost them. Let's see, at whatever point is helpful, whatever point, I'll say, I'll, like, here I am feeding it again, makes sense. 
I roll a perception check of, let's see what it is. Twenty-three to make sure I've lost them. Mm -hmm. So here, I don't know if this is like <clears throat> Chat GPT three doing it, three five doing it, or making it up, but you see, it started inserting these uh, these things which are fine, but I don't really like them. Uh, so that makes sense. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to make, try to find and make a hiding spot, maybe with loose branches. I roll a survival check of uh, not a great one at all, of four for that. And then attempt to take a short rest to regain hit points. Do I have an uneventful short rest or does something more happen? Let's see. Uh oh. Oh well. It just squirrels, rabbits, birds. <clears throat> Let's see. I'll ignore small animals and continue my rest. I'll, 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 uh, I'll assume I can finish and finish my rest. After an hour, I regain Yeah, not so bad. So now she's uh, she's got eight hit points. All right, seven hit points. I make my way back to the inn. We'll have her roll a survival to find her way. Rolling, let's see, I attempt rolling an eight or survival to find my way. Now this is another area where like, if you were a DM and you were like, we gotta wrap this up, you would be like, you find your way back to the end. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is do this and see how it responds. And then I'll wrap up. Oh, see, that's fun. So that could be like continuing stuff there. Uh, it's basically just said that I've lost my way trying to find back, which is fine. It, it could result in some fun uh, adventures. Uh, but this has been definitely long enough. So what did we what did we figure out here? I think that uh, it's it's okay. And there's probably some crafting of, of prompts, uh, fixing the prompt up some more. The combat in chat GPT-4 was particularly impressive based on my experience a long time ago. I think uh, that might be a good place to focus on some more is like just perfect the uh, the combat stuff and then let's look at let's look at kind of the 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 tests i'm not going to go back and look at this but i think the description of the inn was pretty good and it did it really jumped ahead so there was that major thing that it jumped ahead uh and didn't kind of start uh with this so we totally skipped over that so that's something right uh is so we need to in the adventure text, tell it when to start so that, not when to start, tell it at which point it should start 
so that it doesn't jump ahead in the adventure. So you remember, I gave it the adventure, and it went all the way, instead of talking with the innkeeper, like it narrated all this stuff, and then went all the way to the, the goblins running off with stuff. And it did. Uh, remember when I when we interacted with the goblin? Well, oh, sorry, I'm highlighting this. Let me move over to it. So remember when I asked the uh, I asked the goblins to surrender? It actually drew on it being like a noble thing, kind of when I prompted it to interpret it, but it knew about it. Uh, and you, so let's look at these things. So in the first instance. You may remember if you watched this far that uh, it actually determined without me rolling that uh, the character intimidated the goblin successfully, which was kind of fun. And then the situation resolved itself. And then I rolled a 23 or something to intimidate them, which uh, did allow them to intimidate them. And uh, they also ran away. But then I added in this twist that when I told it when we were going back, it was going to ambush them again, which it misinterpreted in a delightful way that when she went to get the uh, the box of stolen mead, that they were ambushing and attacking her again, which turned out to be terribly as, you know, getting attacked by a horde of goblins, uh, like, you know, a couple of, a couple, three of goblins will do to a low level character. And uh, that went pretty well. So, and then also in the ambush thing, you remember we had to tell it not to reveal secrets. So that's a key thing to remember to add to the prompt that it kind of failed at. And did it really use goblin tactics? I don't think so at all. Like it had two, I guess it, you know, it determined that two goblins would use their bows, their short bow. And one of them was using a javelin to throw and then maybe advance forward which is an interesting choice, uh, but that it didn't have the other goblins. I couldn't really tell, but um, I don't know if it rolled with advantage, so rolling twice and taking the better roll because they were successfully hiding. And it definitely didn't tell me that the goblins would use, they have a tactic where they can attack and then go hide as a bonus action, which in a forest situation seems perfectly legit, uh, I guess that you could do, in which case they could get advantage again. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to work, but that's what I would do, because that's kind of the whole point of that situation. Uh, so the combat was interesting, but it could have been better. And also, I know I said this several times, but like for solo role-playing, running combat on your own, I think is a bit faster, even determining what people would do. So it might be interesting just to Maybe if you were narrating it by voice, it might be good. Like, because if, if you could imagine in combat, if you asked it what, what it was doing and then you rolled the dice for it, I don't know. I don't know. We, we'll see what, what, what happens. I think combat just takes a long time, uh, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, and then at the end, I think it was pretty good at figuring out not how to wrap it up, but that, like, because... Rules-wise, it was very liberal with letting her retreat from the situation. But then, as far as losing her way, that was kind of nice. So was it successful? I don't know. It was it was okay. But I don't think it's ready to, uh, you know, take over the world uh, based on this stuff. Uh, but I think it was a pretty good experiment. You can kind of see how, how uh, it, it does all right. Uh, and I think if you refined it over and over again, uh, it, it would go well. Maybe one thing that would be interesting would be to take a transcript of what I just said and stick it at the end of it, of, of this session and have it read over that and come up with like some lessons learned and some prompts. Like, I think there's, there's a lot uh, of stuff that would be good once you kind of Ouroboros it, kind of start feeding it into itself so that it actually learns. Uh, so then the other thing to do with this uh, format would be to run it uh, in Gemini, which I think you could cut and paste these things. I don't think they're long enough. Uh, that Jim and I would cut it off and see if that works out better, uh, which will be an experiment for next time. Well, if you want to see uh, my other experiments, I've got two other live sessions I've done, and I've made some smaller videos of doing things. Uh, there's a link below to the playlist of that. And there's also a link if you're interested in using Mid Journey. Uh, I made a blog post about how I use it to make really big uh, battle maps. Uh, like I was saying, I like to have big battle maps because some of the characters I play with are ranged and, you know, like here, 
the character ran off into the forest. It'd be cool to like, if you wanted to, to do a little cat and mouse chase uh, of someone running away. But I've got a blog post going over that. It's nothing too advanced. And uh, hopefully I'll make an edit of this. Maybe I'll just make some commentary instead of uh, a whole edit of it because it seems like a ridiculous thing to edit. Uh, but I can kind of write, uh, maybe I'll make a video kind of commenting on what worked and didn't work with examples. And uh, maybe next week sometime, I'll find time to do another thing here. Maybe I'll run through the same thing with Jim and I, just to kind of rate the two of them together. And, uh, you know, as they say, do the things, like and subscribe, and you'll be notified when I do a uh, another stream. So uh, with that, uh, you know, have fun. <laughs>